In this video, we are going to be doing calculations with measured values and then rounding our answer to the correct number of significant figures. And when we're considering the rules for significant figures, we have to make sure that we understand what mathematical operation we're doing. Most of the time, we're going to be doing multiplication and division in chemistry. And those rules are going to be completely separate than the addition and subtraction rules. And I'm going to talk about the addition and subtraction rules first. And our answer, let's say for example, we're adding up three values, 1.008, and we're adding that to 14.01, and then adding that to 15.9994. So these are all masses, for example, of, of, of atoms. This is hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. And just like we were taught in school to add numbers, we line up the decimal. So we'll line that decimal up, and then our answer is going to be limited to decimal places. So I'm going to say that right here. Our answer is limited by the decimal places that we know with certainty. And so, for example, when we were in school, we were taught to put a zero here. And that is not really correct, but we didn't learn about significant figures at a young age. But we'll still go ahead and do the addition for and that would be 17, carry the 1, 9, 10, 11, carry the 1, 10, carry the 1, 11, carry the 1. Now I hope I added that correctly. So we are going to only be able to report our answer to two decimal places or to the 1 one hundredths place because we are limited by this value here. This value we know to the one one thousandths place, this one to the one ten thousandths place. So we don't write question marks when we don't know what a value is, but technically uh, we could write question marks there. So if we do not know this one thousandth place on this number, then there's no way we could report the sum of these values to this place. Okay. So for significant figures, again, when we're adding or subtracting, we don't care about how many significant figures any one of these numbers has. But what we do care about is the decimal places. So this number has the fewest decimal places. There's only two. So our answer is limited to two. Now, going over to the multiplication and division rules, here we have uh, a complete different set of rules, and our answer is going to be limited by the factor that has the least number of significant figures. So our answer is limited by the value with the least significant figures. And that's why it's important to look at any number and know exactly how many significant figures that number has so that if we do a calculation with those values, we can round our answer correctly. So for example, if we want to take a measurement, say something was 0.50 meters wide, and we're going to multiply that by 125 meters for example, in length, then if we do that calculation on the calculator, 0 0.5 times 1125, we'll get 562.5. So we cannot report all of these values because our answer is going to be limited to two significant figures. This value has four significant figures. And this value, remember, all leading zeros are crossed out. And a zero at the end of a number is significant if there's a decimal in the number. 
So this has two significant figures, so our answer is limited to two. So we could write this answer 562.5 in scientific notation, or we could just drop that off in the ones place and call this 560 square meters. There's our two significant figures. Or again, a sure way to always get the number of significant figures correctly is to put the answer in scientific notation. So if we move the decimal two places to the left, we know that we can only report two significant figures. So we put 5.6 times 10 squared, since we move the decimal two places, and I was going to say something else about that. Now this may seem crazy. Why do we do that? So I'm going to show us with um, the uncertainty in each measurement why we could not report 562.5 square meters is our answer. So for example, an area is a length times a width. So if we take our measurement of 0.5, let's say that was the width. So 0.5 means as a measured value that that answer, actually that's 0 0.50. So this answer is somewhere between 0.49 and 5.1 or 0.51, excuse me. So here's our error. So our error, remember, is the last digit that we know with certainty. So this is plus or minus 0.01. So the measurement of 0.50 could be as large as 0.51 meters or as small as 0.49 meters. And then the measurement of 1125 meters Again, the uncertainty is in the last digit, so this could be as small as 1124 meters or as large as 1126 meters. So this is actually making quite a mess of the paper, but this would be our small error. So there is always a little bit of uncertainty or error in a measurement. So if we take the 0.49 times 1124, that area would be 0.49. We would get an area of 550.76 square meters. So our area could be as small as 550, or it could be as large as the 1126 times the 0.5. So this is the small measurement, or we could have 1126, the larger uncertainty, if we multiply those values together, 1126 times 0.51, we get 574.26 square meters. And from these measured values, and because we have determined and reported the measured values to these significant figures, then we have an error, error in our area. So all we know that is that our area is somewhere between 550 and 574 square meters. So reporting an area to 562.5 square meters when in all reality we have a relatively large uncertainty uh, would be incorrect. So that's the why we would report our answer like that. So it's safe to say that our area is 560 square meters. Now it's plus or minus uh, 10 meters. So that's what that shows, 560 plus or minus 10 square meters. So we only know with certainty this measurement to the tens place. Okay, so I'll do a few more examples on another slide. For the most part in my chemistry class, I'm not going to ask the why, or I'm not going to have students show the margin of error. 
Rather, we're just going to look at a multiplication or division problem, determine the number of significant figures that's the smallest or the value that has the least number of significant figures, and then round our answer accordingly.